isn't it, Greg? It is incredibly varied and incredibly fast on the ice oval here at the Circuit of Anduamel in Valcour for the Grand Prix Scadu de Valcour. Motorcycles, high speed sleds on the ice oval, but you want action. Canterbury, fourth round of the championship, served it up. Man, they were going off. Look at this big digger by Justin Tate. If you like this sort of action, make sure you see the next round from Shakopee. It's going to be coming up on ESPN2 Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern. And if you missed it, go for the re-air at 4 a.m. Eastern on Sunday. Now let's go down to Greg Kramer for Inside Cross. Inside Cross brought to you by Ride Effects High Performance Shocks. Here's Greg. Hi everybody and welcome to Inside Cross. It is cold here in Valcour. I mean, we're talking 20 below Fahrenheit cold. We want to take an in-depth look at how that affects the riders. The machines, not so much. They love it when it's cold. They run better. But the bigger concern by far is the rider. And the biggest issue, because they run the high bars nowadays because of that stand-up style, they elevate the bars, is the hands are out in the elements. Well, what happens, they even run hand warmers, but that just warms up the palm, doesn't do anything for the back of the hand, and that's where they're running problems. They put in these wind deflectors, anything to help, but it's so cold, the air is still getting behind it, then they can't feel the bars even, and it gets very dicey and deep. Now, it's not just hands, there's lots of other things the riders are doing to protect themselves from these brutal elements. What sort of extra preparation do you have for when it's really, really cold? Uh, I use some duct tape on my gloves and uh, you know tape it up so the wind doesn't come through and, and cool you down. And I use this cool little thing, put it over my face like this, you know, so I can keep my nose and forehead from freezing up. Yeah, it gets pretty cold out there, so you got to uh, try your best to stay warm, so you don't don't got to think about that. You can just concentrate on racing and, and uh, beating Blair Morgan. Mr. Cooster, what do you do for extra preparation when it's really cold? Extra layers and lots of tape on your face and over your gloves. Do you think all the other people that aren't from Canada are a bunch of wusses? Maybe. I dare you to say it. They're wusses. When I do have to come out of the trailer, I just put heavier gloves on for the for the races, and then uh, some of the guys use duct tape, but I don't. I just take it like a man. Greg, as you can see, I am an industry professional. It's time for the second round of Pro Open Qualifying. After that foolishness, here's a shot of someone who may be struggling. Tucker Hibbert, he's currently second in both classes behind Blair Morgan. Now keep in mind though, even though he ended up second in the Pro Stock Final earlier today, at the most recent round, he won them both with great hole shots. Not his strong suit this year. He's gonna need him again to make up any ground on this guy. Well, after finishing second to Tucker Hibbert in both championships last year, 7th seed Blair Morgan is on a roll, and he has big, fat trophies in his goggles. Well, and keep in mind, too, that he may have finished second to, the, to uh, Tucker in those championships, but he had a lot more wins. Here's a huge story. This is the guy that's replacing DJ. Blew his knee out at the last race, done for the year. They brought up a young semi-pro racer out of the Wisconsin Regional Series for WSA, and Steve Shearing's giving him a ride in the big show. This guy knows what that feels like. It's funny, because Ross Martin looks like a little DJ double, but Levi Lavalle, the newest pro on the scene. I love all the chips in the front of his helmet from slamming his face into the handlebars. Well, he's an aggressive in the air kind of rider, and sometimes you bounce when you land. Five lap heat, and again, points on the line. This is him. God, I love that sound. I was just going to say, oh, and Sean Crapo ended up working into the lead, but did you see how he had a real awkward moment over one of those bumps? And look at this. He is framed on either side by Skidoo's. Morgan on the inside to the right. Whoa. Whoa, outside. Oh, did you see Morgan get torqued? Crapo coming off an injury, broke a little bone in his leg in the first round at Duluth. Came back miraculously fast, and he's now finally getting back up to speed. We've been talking about tough, strong guys. That guy sitting third right now defines it. Carl Allard from right here in Quebec. This guy is not only fast, he is a brute animal and is fun to watch. Boy, Wolfie fending off Morgan here for handling. Privateer versus factory bigwig of Blair Morgan and Todd Wolf coming over the finish line jump. But let's look at this battle right now between Allard and Gula down the straightaway in the snow dust of Blair Morgan. Unbelievable race that they're putting on here. Right there is Gula. He found a lane and shot past Allard. 
Gerard trying to come back after him. No. Well, or does he? Boy, he was close, but Gula was able to shut the door. But look at the cutback move Alard made. I love it when they just switch. Inside, oh! outside, slam, they hit! Turns. And there's Sean Crapo and Levi Lavalle coming into the fray. Looks like deja vu all over again from that first round. Those two guys don't want to be taking each other out, but they want to be racing and going for the uh, top finish for their team, certainly. But look at the job Wolf's doing up front right now. This is very impressive. I was going to say, Todd Wolf is in front with Liam Morgan in the taillights. He's got to be feeling good about that. Hold that thing wide open. Well, and that's the thing with these mods. You think the Stockers throw up roost. These mods really throw it up. We've already talked about how this stuff, because it's so cold, it's like ice crystals, it's ice dust, it just hangs, not a lot of breeze. And every time, right there, every time Wolfie nails the throttle, he throws up a pile of that roost right into Morgan's face. And for a minute, Morgan really is blunted. Watch how he's trying to find way different lines. Get as far away from the back of that sled as he can, but you can't always do that. As skilled as Blair Morgan is, sometimes you wonder if he's just waiting to make the move or someone like Todd Wolf is actually leaving him in the dust. Well, and that's the key because Morgan is so rarely denied that you do think maybe he's just laying back, and he really is. I mean, while he's trying to get out of the way like he does right here, he finds a different line, squirts by on the inside. Now, Wolf will try it around the outside, but one thing Blair Morgan does is get on the trigger really early, exit and turns, and that pays off with launch out of the corners and immediate lead. When you squeeze the trigger on a mod, you're going somewhere real fast. Power to weight ratio, you said it earlier, 170 horsepower thereabouts, and the sleds only weigh 435. That's a pretty impressive power to weight. We're into our final lap. The leader is Blair Morgan, followed by Todd Wolf, Gula, Allard, and Sean Crapo. Right there is a good look at young Sean. This is his rookie season as a pro. You talked about the broken bone. And here is Ross Martin. Now you'll notice he's running the 125 just to make sure that nobody actually confuses him with DJ because he do look quite a bit alike on the sled. Talk about baptism under fire. The staff didn't have to fill a guy like DJ Hughes and do it mid-season and changing manufacturers. It's not like you're going from the same type of sled to another one. He's going from the Skidoo we used to ride in the Wisconsin Regional Circuit to Polaris. And they're not necessarily better or worse, but they're very different. Now let's go back to the battle for fifth place. You know their hands have to be cold. And it is both Polaris sled teammates, Levi Lavallo, oh! sneaking underneath Sean Grapo to take the position. Sean made a little mental error. He looked over his shoulder, away from the corner, got into out. Levi cut underneath, launched by, picked up the spot. We'll be right back. trip to Canada, or Valco for that matter, would be complete without poutine. French fries, cute boy cheese, and gravy. This, my friends, is Canadian health food in its finest presentation. Look at steaming, watching the snow cross at the Grand Prix de Valco. J'aime la poutine. I love poutine. Don't tell my trainer I'm eating this. Woo! Gotta get that out of my system! <laughs> It'll light you up. I, so you know French for you love poutine, but you know French for I'm an American pig. <laughs> I had a thing lodged in my throat. Back to Pro Open Qualifying Round 2 with the roar of the mods. Tucker Hibbert. Oh, but on the outside, Brad Pitlick on the number 90. Pitlick, but outside of him, once again, Tate who has that outside line, Jerry, in that first turn after the start line, absolutely dialed. And then he's outside this long sweeping corner and goes right around the outside. And boy, he has that start sequence figured out. Justin Tate on a roll here in Canada. 10 below zero, I might add. A great day for snowmobile racing, but very cold on the hands. You notice Pitlick was not making it easy. He came right up the inside again, tried to park him on the outside, couldn't do it. And Ibsen's got back around Hibbert temporarily. Oh, he's got him now. And then behind him comes Island. That's Ibsen, then Hibbert, then Island. Tucker Hibbert sneaking in underneath Kent Ibsen. 
The battle for third goes on, but it is Justin Tate in the lead on the black and royal sled. Watch this now. Hibbert is inside, makes the pass on Ibsen, but you see he made sure he could get outside in that real rough inside line, used that smoothness, just drove away from him. The track is getting beat up under the tracks of the big mod sled from the 170 Boom! Up. Oh, Pitlick banging into Tucker, but Tucker holds the position. Yeah, Pitlick was just trying to counter move, and they got into each other, side to side bump. But Tucker was already driving through the exit of the corner and was able to hang on to it. Boy, again, deja vu all over again. We saw this a couple rounds ago. And talk about the pressure on Tate. Here comes Stibbert again. Oh, T-Train a little bit on the outside of the line there. Just ripping on the Russ Ebert tuned Arcticat. I think Tate was a little bit on the outside of the line and our camera guy wanted to make sure he wasn't in their line. Rule number one for cameramen, don't be on the outside of the turn. Do not become part of the racing surface. Look at this battle for the lead between Tucker Hibbert and Justin Tate. Tate is on a roll this weekend. Man, he has shown some great speed, but the question now is, does he have one, either enough speed or a wide enough Polaris to keep Hibbert behind him? And that comes down to how are you dealing with pressure? And of course, in third is Ken Ibsen, also riding very strong. Two laps to go at this stage. Again, you see how wide Tate is. Picked one of those hay bales over there and threw up a bunch of the green stuff, the brown stuff. But that's just showing you that he's doing everything within his power right now to uh, stay in front of him. In fact, he's opened that margin up just a little bit. And keep in mind, Hibbert is just as susceptible to roost in the face as anybody else is. And when you're sitting in second and getting blasted, and keep in mind, I mean, look at some of these things in the front of the picture. There's some little hard chunks in there. The big bugs in this mod power, it throws it up, hits you. Even with chest protectors and goggles, it stinks. You feel it. Tate has to step up his game due to the lack of DJ Ekstrom on the playing field from an injury. White flag out, one lap to go. And Justin Tate pulled off the train. Yeah, you know that train is coming big time as well. You know, not just is, is Tate sort of the leader of the team now with DJ out, he also has to be a mentor. He's got to show Ross, young Ross, the ropes, but sometimes that can actually make you an even better rider because you start examining what you're doing, what that young rider is doing, and you find little tricks for yourself. And I'll tell you what, Tate seems to have figured out a bag full of them right now. You saw on that last turn, Tucker tried to go on the inside. He lost a little drive. The track kind of spun, and Tate moved away. Tucker trying to get an outside in move into that corner, and it's not working, and he did it! You see Tate look over to see where Tucker was? Oh, you bet he was worried, but he also knew as he looked over, if I could stay on it and trigger it right now, I just shot it. It's always a great day when you can beat someone like Tucker Hibbert or Blair Morgan. Justin Tate taking the win. We'll be back. Welcome back to Valpo, Canada for WSA Snowcross. The qualifying is in the books. Greg, what's the story? Well, Pro Open, you can see Justin Tate, big first time tied with Hibbert for top qualifier. Big Kuster Gula, but look at Morgan buried in there, seventh in that first round. Here's the sad story, DJ Extra, done. Oh. Out for the season with a torn ACL. Hyperextended his leg in New York, and he is gone. He's being replaced by Ross Martin, who's sitting in, taking his number and adding one from 25 to 125. But let's now jump to the lineup for the final. Here he is, the guy who ended up tied for top qualifier, first time in his career. Just an awesome story. And that last round of qualifying, that last heat showed you he can get the job done. He looks all hunched over. What is it, cold or something? You'd think. Uh, here's Noel Kohansky, Canadian. This is always important for him. Noel, we talked about before, coming off that injury, it's taken him a little time to find the form and the rhythm. But here, Noel always has fun, loves what he's doing. And I'll tell you what, the guy is a great showman. Speaking of which. Speaking of which, the WSA Showman of the Year last year, launching Levi Lavalle. Running the Red Bull Sled Polaris Team Industries, reaching down, trying to keep his hands warm. What's up with Levi? It's always a show. Well, and fast, too. Remember, he had that fourth place finish in Pro Stock, so he's on the move, as is Carl Kuster. Third in Pro Open points, has been very quick all weekend. He too Canadian, so this race special for him. And I'll tell you, the guy that needs to 
turn it around is TJ Gula. Uh, there's that great, great graphic scheme again, but he has just struggled all weekend long. TJ Gula, though, took a gold medal at Hillcross at the Winter X Games, I might add. That's very true indeed. So Gula getting ready, and there's assistant race director and former pro champ Nathan Titus saying, let's roll this bad boy. The final for the Pro Open here in Valcor, Canada. Let's get ready! Oh! Kohansky got squeezed on the inside. Yeah, that he, Gula that's down? Gula. Oh, it goes from bad to worse. Kohansky and Gula both end up upended. And that's going to leave. That, that Carl Allard got a great launch. Look on the inside. Guess who? Mr. Morgan. Unbelievable. How does he do it? I don't know. It's uh, He's got, uh, obviously, tremendous reaction times. He also has some great mechanical help. There's no question of that. And he's also just that good. A large second. And Tate, uh, Tate apparently has just worked. But he did. He got by Carl Allard. Boy, Justin Tate is just hooked up. Lam Morgan, the leader right now, followed by Justin Tate, Kyle Allard, and Kuzma is in fourth. Where's teammate? Look at Allard, that outside line. Oh, and that's oh. Dave Allard. That's off, and that's that's Gula again. A problem, another problem for Gula. Got into it with Dave Allard. Oh, and Dave looks like he got hit a little bit there. He came off hard. Meanwhile, there's Carl, his brother. No, oh, Carl offloads. Boy, what a terrible lap for the family of large. Boy, Dave is still down and shaken up. I believe that Gula came through the snow dust and might have had some sort of run-in with a large with that bad, bad snow dust, bad vision here in Valcor. Well, I'll tell you, it's just tough. And of course, you got these blind jumps and moguls, and if you're right behind somebody and they have a problem, and you're already committed, you're committed. There's not a lot you can do about it. Ibsen, and, well, that's Ibsen now taking a run at tape. And Alar, he is still laying there. And the battle for second place between Justin Tate in the front there, followed by Kent Ibsen. Now with Alar still on the track, Greg, I'm surprised that we haven't seen a red flag yet. Well, I think we might, because really what will determine if we bring out a red flag is if you have to get medical on the track uh, to take a look at the driver as opposed to getting the driver off. And the way that Alar is there and not moving, I very well think that we may see the red come out because obviously he's hurt and they need to attend to him. And now you see that one of the medical workers is there, so I think that might really set us up for a red flag. And there it is. Wade Leonard up at the start gets the word from our race directors. Blair Bodley, and of course, we already saw Nathan Titus, and they've made the call, so. Now, this is going to be interesting because what they're going to have to do, of course, we completed more than two laps, so they'll have to stagger the lineup. But, Jerry, let's go back and take a look at it and see if we can see what happened. We suspect that Gula got into Allard. Now, he's crashed, and he's nowhere near the sled. Here comes Gula, and there's Allard. So, obviously, in some shape or form, Gula's in his sled got into Allard. Allard must have been behind his sled, and Gula blindsided coming over the jump, got into him, and there's brother Carl, and obviously he's pretty concerned over there checking things out, watching what's going on, Jerry, and uh, we're going to be, I think we're going to be parked for a bit. That has to be a terrible feeling for TJ Gula to have come through the snow dust and someone had already crashed and he pretty much landed on him, so you know TJ feels bad. Here well, once it is. again, you, you can can't see, see him. Yeah. He's not even in frame. There's Gula, and all of a sudden, Allard appears. And you can see Gula had his sled twisted sideways the whole thing, so he was doing everything within his power to get away. And look at his reaction. See him put his head down? Yep. So he obviously did get into him. There's That's such a hollow feeling when you, you've hit somebody. Whether you could have avoided it or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, you think you should have. You feel terrible about it. Believe me, in that situation, it happened so fast, there's no way that Gula could have avoided it. You can see one of the mechanics trying to explain what happened. And wow, very quick response here. The medics already have on the board and are moving him off the track. Now let's lesson in. This is Blair Bodley, race director, explaining the restart. I think. It's a clean shot, so you'll be racing into this corner and around. We've moved the bales out. You can't come across it here. Walk well, apparently it's going to be a restart after the red flag with the Allard crash. Stick around for more from Valcor. Welcome back to Valcor Canada, and we're under a restart with two laps down 
in the Pro Open Final, Greg. What they've done, Jerry, they've created a lane, so it's very single file in the order of the last completed lap, and that, of course, would mean that Morgan's out front, Tate, Gibson, Booster, Lavalli, and the rest of the pack, but they funneled them into an area so they couldn't just fan out and start blocking everybody. Pretty smart move. Maybe the one guy he wasn't crazy about it was Hibbert, because he was hoping maybe to be able to get a jump on that restart, and he had to wait until they cleared that lane and all those bails. Now all day we've talked about visibility of the snow dust. You saw on that other shot on the other side, the sun coming through all the hanging dust. Terrible visibility here in Balfour. Well, what it is is just, you know, as I said, that's little really ice particles, and the sun hits it, and it's behind it, and it's pretty, but it explodes it with just like this crystalline light, and it's blinding. So now they have that aspect to deal with as well. The battle for second, Justin Tate, Ken Gibson, side by eight. Both of these guys putting in great rides this weekend, trying to chase down Blair Morgan, who is our leader. Well, the interesting story with Ibsen is prior to the basketball injury to his knee, he had two years ago that kept him out last season. He was the guy, the cover, the, every, the one everybody thought could be the Morgan Hibbert Ibsen. Uh, you know, triumvirate, as I've used that, uh, that phrase before. Then he missed that whole season. You've seen the rust just fall off. And he's got his race crap back, and it's great to see. This kid can be very, very good. Cooster coming after him. Look who's back in that top five. Steve out of Ollie. Cooster, job security on his mind. Liam Morgan, teammate, he wants to stay in that position next year. He's chasing Ken Ibsen, who is now in third. But it's up front to 7 C. Superman, Liam Morgan, through the dust. And, oh, terrible visibility. You see how pretty that is, what I'm saying there. But if you're running through it, it's terrible. And right now, Morgan is absolutely uh, to be awfully figurative, making hay while the sun shines, because he's got no visibility problems, especially after that restart. The pack is still pretty grouped together. He's got clear track, clear visibility, and he is gone. And look there, Lavalle, the number 108 player, is stuffing it up on the backside of Kyle Booster. Trying to work up a little aggressive fashion there by Levi. That's never been a, a <laughs> problem for Levi, is being aggressive. He loves to be aggressive. We've seen it. I mean, heck, his first race as a pro, or one of his first races as a pro. He see Shabitsky dive underneath? underneath. <laughs> oh, yep. Levi was working the outside, and Carl said that was a nice inside lane. But look at Levi airing out, trying to attack right back again. Boy, look at that mess that drives me. Shabitsky and Lavalle in the turn. They have following booster. Well, Lavalle got right up underneath Shabitsky again. And right there, that's a case, that's a nice line for Lavalle if you're inside the guy before you get to the turn. He wasn't close, and that gave Shabitsky a wider arc through the corner, which means more speed. Levi's in trouble. Levi's had problems all year long. He either does good or breaks equipment or crashes. Obviously, he's under a mechanical distress right now. Yeah, you can see him. He was furious, sort of banging his head, hand on the bars, really upset. It's back and at it now. He's back to speed, but he's lost an awful lot of time. Wonder what that was. Let's go back to the battle for third place. Kent Ibsen leading 47 C. Carl Brewster on the yellow skidoo. You can see right there coming through the dust. That's a great shot. Ooh, look at that. Look how hard Brewster had to get over to try and make that corner. That's the soft stuff, this grainy, granular snow. And if you get parked like that, the momentum's gone. And even with a mod sled, you can't gas it till you get it turned. And that's hard work. Meanwhile, while this is all going on, Blair Morgan is out front setting the standard for snowcross racing here in Canada today, telling everybody what time it is and who's the man. Oh, there's no question to that. You notice the guy who's not even in the frame yet in that top five is Hibbert. He's just way back there, buried right now. Our top qualifier, Justin Tate, is holding the second place position. Tate having a very strong run. I mean, this is exactly what he needed here to have Booster come up, start bothering Ibsen, because now Ibsen more worried about the guy behind him and running down Tate in front of him. And I think behind Shabitsky now, I saw a couple glimpses of Hibbert. So I think he's cracked the top six, see if he can do more. But right now, he's got some very, very fast companies he's going to have to get by. Now we have to remember it's about 10 degrees below zero and you're hanging on to 170 horsepower of a mod for 12 laps. 
Justin Tate is in second place. I wonder how his hands feel. Uh, they've got to be brutalized. Just keep in mind that whole time we had the red flag, they're standing out there and just chilling out there, not in their trailers, not in the, in the a car, anything, trying to get warmed up. So it's not helping. And you saw the signal about a half a lap ago. We're on the last lap and a half about right now. There's your margin. Justin Tate's going to have to pull a real rabbit out of his hat if he wants to get up past Blair Morgan, who was looking a little confident styling on the final lap already. Yeah, yeah well, he knows it. He knows that it's his unless he makes a mistake. He's not real prone to that, and he's having a little fun. And remember, not only he rides Skidoo, this is the home of Skidoo. He's Canadian. This is Canada. This is everything. This is their Super Bowl in a sense. So he's doing a, a, just a superb job, and there's the margin back to Tate. By the way, some good news we just got on Dave Allard. It gets better. He was knocked unconscious, but he's doing okay. He's alert. He's lost a couple of teeth and a laceration in his mouth. Otherwise, he'll be sore, but okay. That's unbelievable. Look at the move right here. Tucker Hibbert is up behind Kyle Shabitsky. Hibbert currently in sixth place. He needs to move up and get more points. And Blair Morgan, once again, is the winner. A sweep in Canada for Morgan, and Hibbert apparently has done it. Yep, he has worked by Shabinsky. He takes fifth, but still in all, he came in here 20 points behind Morgan to start. He maybe made up a little ground qualifying, but Morgan expands that. There's Levi working on a top five. Jerry had the mechanical problems. He finishes way back outside the top ten. Levi finished 11, but it's his fourth pro open win for Blair Morgan. We'll be back. presentation of WSA Snowgrass has been brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. And by Snow X Magazine, the official publication of the WSA. And there you have it. A look at our top qualifier. And guess what? A form carry. Justin Tate, second place. What a great run. And Ken Ibsen, his second consecutive third place finish on the weekend. He is loving Valcour. Here are the final pro open results. Morgan, Tate Ibsen, then Cooster, and then Tucker Hibbert. But let's head down to Victory Circle. Jerry Bernardo is with Ken. All right. I am so pumped to see you up here. You got a third in Valco. You're running so strong all weekend. Man, this is great. Definitely. My goal was to come in here strong and uh, get, try and get a podium, and I got two of them, two thirds. And uh, I'm just glad to get the Ola Racing Articat up front. Thanks. You're going to keep it on a roll for us? I yeah, definitely hope so. All right, go talk to those crazy Canadians, will ya? All right, and now let's take a look at the uh, points now after this sixth round at Pro Open. Morgan continues to lead comfortably over Hibbert. But you see, Kuster, Shabitsky, Amasalo, that's all fairly close. This battle's not done yet. I want to remind you, the next show coming up, Castle HJC Manufacturers Cup from Canterbury Park at Chagamy, Friday, March 7th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. The re-air Sunday, March 9th, 4 a.m. Eastern Time. But the guy who owns Valcour, Blair Morgan. Thanks for watching. I'm Jerry Bonato along with Greg Kramer. I've been sitting in for Paul Page. He's going to be back at the next show. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.